Hi there and welcome back. If you are planning to take the SHRIM or HRCA exam, then you will need to be familiar with certain HR terms and definitions like what is FSA, HRA and HSA. What is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA. What is Imputed Income? In this video, we will be reviewing these important HR terms and definitions you need to know to ace the SHRIM or HRCI exam. So let's begin. What is a Healthcare Flexibility Spending Account or FSA? An FSA is a benefits plan designed to allow employees to set aside pre-tax dollars to pay for eligible medical expenses such as co-pays, deductibles and other out-of-pocket medical expenses. They are tax advantaged accounts that let you use pre-tax dollars to pay for eligible medical expenses. You can use an FSA to save on average 30% on healthcare costs. Don't think of it as money deducted from your paycheck. Instead, think of it as money added to your wallet. Now timing matters. You only have one year to spend your FSA money. Unused funds are forfeited to your employer, usually at the end of the planned year. Some organizations, however, offer options that can make it easier to manage your FSA. Because of the tax savings on contributions, you can save an average of 30% on qualified medical expenses, including but not limited to the following. Now, I am not going to go through all of them over here. You can pause the video here and go through them if you would like to. Next, let's understand what is HRA or Health Reimbursement Account, also known as a Health Reimbursement Arrangement. This is a type of savings account that is set up and funded by the employers for employees. They can use this on eligible healthcare, dental and vision expenses for themselves and their dependents. Of course, the dependents must also be enrolled in the HRA. Since the employer funds the HRA, they choose which expenses are eligible for reimbursement and how much of the account funds can roll over into the new year. So very similar to an FSA, however, with one major differentiating factor. FSAs are funded by the employee, wherein the employee will decide how much to contribute towards their FSA account. And on the other hand, HRAs are funded by the employer and the employer in this instance can claim tax deductions on the reimbursements made by the employee. So this is one major way to differentiate between an FSA and HRA. Now let's see what is an HSA. An HSA is a type of personal savings account that is owned and funded by an employee through employee income contributions up to $3,650 per year for individuals, up to $7,300 per year for families and an additional $1,000 per year for employees 55 or older. HSA contributions are not taxed by the federal government in most states. However, there are some states such as California and New Jersey that do tax HSAs. Since an HSA is funded and owned by the employee, they keep the money forever. That means there are no concerns for employees about spending all of the money before the end of the year or losing the money if they change employers. Now I understand this can all seem confusing, so let's recap and break it down to easily differentiate between the three. So let's begin with who owns the account. An FSA account is owned by the employer. The HRA account is also owned by the employer, whereas the HSA account is owned by the employee. Who funds the account? An FSA account is employee funded. However, the employer may also fund this account. An HRA account is solely funded by the employer only and employees cannot fund this account. An HSA account, on the other hand, is primarily funded by the employee and the employer may also fund this account. Next, who gets the tax benefit? Well, all three are tax-free except for the HSA account 
there are some limitations the exception to the rule being the states of california and new jersey what happens if i change my employer so to answer this we have to consider who owns the account right the account is owned by the employer obviously will be closed which are fsa and hra accounts whereas the hsa account is owned by the employee and so they will be able to continue maintaining this account even after they change their jobs great I apologize in advance for interrupting the video right now just a quick message from me if you are preparing for the shrim exam then consider checking out my shrim exam study guide the one book learning system i have left a link in the description of this video where you can find more details about this guide and how to use it to ace the exam now back to the video moving along what is the health insurance portability and accountability act also commonly known as hipaa hipaa protects the privacy of personal medical information prohibits discrimination based on health status in group health plans and allows for special group health plan enrollment opportunities the federal law was signed by president bill clinton on august 21 1996 hipaa overrides state laws regarding the safety of medical information unless the state law is considered more stringent than hipaa itself hipaa has two main purposes one to provide continuous health insurance coverage for workers who lose or change their job and number two to ultimately reduce the cost of healthcare by standardizing the electronic transmission of administrative and financial transactions covered entities and individuals who intentionally obtain or disclose phi in violation of the hipaa privacy rule can be fined up to 50000 us dollars and receive up to 1 year in prison if the hipaa privacy rule is violated under false pretenses the penalties can be increased to a 100000 dollar fine and up to 10 years in prison moving along If you are finding value in this video and would like to be reminded of similar videos then consider subscribing to my channel like the video leave a comment thanks a bunch let's continue what is imputed income the definition of imputed income is benefits employees receive that aren't part of their salary or wages like access to a company car or a gym membership but still get taxed as part of their income The employee may not have to pay for those benefits but they are responsible for paying the tax on the value of them. In the example of the company car, employees would have to pay taxes on the amount it would cost to lease that same car. Some benefits employees receive are excluded and tax exempt such as health insurance or meals. There are many different types of fringe benefits that give rise to imputed income. common imputed wages that don't come with a limit or restrictions are employee discounts and perks some companies offer employees extra discounts on goods or services from partner companies these perks could give rise to imputed income gym memberships many big companies offer gym memberships to help foster employee health these memberships fall into the category of imputed income moving expense reimbursement if you move for a job you likely tally the expenses incurred along the way moving van rental relocation costs realtor fees and other moving expenses some other examples of items that give rise to imputed income with specific limits are adoption assistance now generally adoption assistance over $15950 per child gives rise to imputed income dependent care your company could offer dependent care for your children or other dependents dependent care exceeding $5000 is taxed as imputed income group term life insurance group term life insurance of more than $50000 is taxed as imputed income educational assistance and tuition educational assistance where companies compensate employees for tuition at higher learning institutions exceeding $5250 is taxed as imputed income now if you are preparing for the shrim exam and are looking for quality shrim 
practice tests, then check the link in the description of this video for a free practice test. Next, I recommend you watch this playlist next in which I cover many more HR terms and definitions. Also, if you found value in the video, then like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. I post HR and leadership related videos every week. I will see you in the next video.